can feel the vibe. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Mr. Gaines. Welcome back to another Algebra 2 instructional lesson as we start to progress in a new unit here in Algebra 2 looking at polynomial functions. Before we get into the really depths of polynomial functions, what we're going to focus on is a, a, a technique of polynomial arithmetic. So up to this point in this year, we've done some addition of polynomials, we've subtracted polynomials, and we've multiplied polynomials. Now we're going to throw in a new arithmetic technique or a couple of techniques with what we call polynomial division. Polynomial division, there's going to be multiple ways to do it. One of the methods that we're going to look at is something that you've done back as far as third, second, or maybe even first grade in what we call long division. So let's go ahead and let's review this with just a generic problem involving numbers. So let's do oh, 328 divided by 7. Now let's talk about some common terms that we're going to need to know and be familiar with in order to do this division as we kind of explain. The number that's being divided or this 328 is what we call the dividend. The number that's doing the dividing or the 7 in this case is what we call the divisor. So if we want to set up a problem of long division, we put the 328, the dividend, in a division symbol or operation here. We put the 7, the divisor, on the outside. And now we go through a process of eventually trying to find out how many times the 7 goes into numbers or let's call it terms to talk about polynomial, uh, to get into the po to polynomial terminology. We're going to find out how many times the divisor goes into the terms or portions of the division. So I'm writing these steps with respect to a polynomial, but we're going to go through this with word with the um, numbers here. So divide the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. So essentially what I want to do is take a look at 7 and divide 3 by 7. Well, 7 does not divide 3 unless it gives us a number less than 1. So we're going to move on and we're going to incorporate the first two terms. So does 7 divide 32? Yes, it does. It divides it a little over four times. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put a four in the top. This is what we call the quotient. The quotient is essentially the number of times that the divisor goes into a term of the dividend. Now we are going to take this quotient and multiply it to the divisor. So I'm going to take four times seven, and that gives me 28. That result, I'm going to subtract from the dividend. So as I subtract 28 from 32, it's going to leave me with 4. And then I'm going to repeat the process. So looking to see if 7 goes into 4, it does not. What I can do here is I can bring down the next term or portion of my dividend. And so now I'm going to see what multiplies to 7 to give me 48, or divide 48 by 7, I would get 6 here. Now, 6 is the highest multiple of 7 that goes into 48. So again, I'm going to take 48, or sorry, the quotient, the portion of the quotient here, 6 times 7, which is 42. I'm going to subtract that result from now what's left over in the dividend, which is 48. This is going to give me 6. When I can no longer continue, when I can no longer continue, what's left over is known as my remainder. So the answer is going to be a combination of the quotient and the remainder. So the resulting expression, one way we can write the resulting answer expression is the quotient, in this case, 46, plus the remainder, 6, over the divisor. So if I divide 328 by 7, it would be 46 over 46 and 6 sevenths. So in my calculator here, I did 328 divided by 7. You can see that expression is 46.857. And now I can do also 46 plus 6 over 7. And I can see that resulting expression is 46.857. 
So we have worked through these steps using numbers as we have done in the past in some lower level courses. Now let's go ahead and take this to polynomial division. The calculator here is not going to be much of a help. We're going to have to use our algebra skills. So as I take a look at number one, it says find the quotient of each of the following using long division. So what we want is we want to identify what my divisor is, which is x plus 2, and my dividend in is, which is 4x plus 3x, sorry, 4x squared plus 3x plus 2. So we're going to set up the problem as we did previously using the numbers. So I'm going to have my division symbol here. On the inside, I'm going to put 4x squared plus 3x plus 2. On the outside, I'm going to put x plus 2. What I can do here is, again, compare the first term of the divisor to the first term of the dividend. Essentially see how many times x goes into 4x squared. Or I can take the first term, 4x squared, and divide it by x. So if I take 4x squared and divide by x, that result is 4x. So this is the first part of my quotient. So step number one is to divide the first term of the quotient by the first term of the divisor. Or sorry, the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. That gives me a portion of the quotient. Now I need to take the quotient times the divisor. So 4x times x would be 4x squared, and 4x times 2 would be 8x. I am going to subtract this result from the dividend. So if I subtract here, the 4x squareds are going to cancel out. 3x minus 8x, it gives me a negative 5x. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring down this 2 to give me a positive 2 there at the end. So my, now my resulting dividend is negative 5x plus 2, and I'm going to repeat the process. So how many times does x go into negative 5x, or what is negative 5x divided by x? The answer would be negative 5. So now I'm going to take this next term in my quotient, negative 5, and multiply that to the divisor, x plus 2. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. I am going to subtract both of these values. So if I subtract these values, subtracting a negative turns it into a positive. So essentially I'm changing the signs here. And then I'm going to simplify. 5x, sorry, negative 5x plus 5x is 0. 2 plus 10 is 12. Now I want to repeat my process. So I'm going to look to see if x goes into 12 or if 12 divides, or sorry, 12 divided by x can be simplified and it cannot. So 12 over x would, would cannot divide any further. And so what we're left with here is a quotient and a remainder. Our resulting answer is going to be that quotient, 4x minus 5, plus the remainder, 12 over x plus 2. So if I were to divide 4x squared plus 3x plus 2 by x plus 2, that result would be 4x minus 5 plus 12 over x plus 2. Now eventually we'll talk about why we're going to do this division, but for right now let's just work on that process. Okay. If you've got the hang of this, go ahead and see if you can do 1b. We're going to go ahead and do 1B. If you don't have the hang of it yet, we're going to go ahead and do this one here. So my dividend is 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. My divisor is x plus 4. So the first thing I'm doing here is just setting up this division problem. Now, I want to compare the first terms. So essentially take 3x squared and divide it in the dividend and divide it by the first term of the divisor. So 3x squared divided by x is... 3x, or 3x times x is 3x squared. So my first term in my quotient is 3x. Now I'm going to take this 3x and multiply it to the divisor. 3x times x is 3x squared, and I'm lining those up underneath the dividend because we know we're going to subtract them. So 3x times 4 is 12x. Now again, we're going to subtract these values. So the 3x squared would subtract to 0. 7x minus 12x would be negative 5x. 
then I'm going to bring down my negative 20 here. Now I want to repeat my process. So a negative, comparing the first terms, negative 5x divided by x would be negative 5, or a negative 5 times x is negative 5x. I'm going to take the second term in my quotient, negative 5, and distribute that, multiply it to my divisor. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. So now I want to subtract both of these values. Remember, if we're subtracting a negative, that is equivalent to adding a positive. Now when I subtract these values, what I'm left with is 0. So this actually divides evenly. So if I divide 3x squared plus 7x minus 20 by x plus 4, my result is going to be 3x minus 5. So really what I'm doing here is if I have, a, I'm, I'm kind of finding factors of this polynomial. So if 3x squared plus 7x minus 20 is divided by x plus 4 to give me 3x minus 5, that means this expression would be the result of doing the opposite operation with those two things, with the quotient and the divisor. So 3x minus 5 times x plus 4, the quotient times the divisor must be equal to my dividend. And if I wanted to, I could distribute here and find out that 3x squared plus 12x minus 5x minus 20 would give me 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. So what I'm doing is I'm using the divisor as a factor of the dividend and finding the resulting factor here through this division. In, now, in this problem, we probably could have factored without dividing, but in the previous problem, we could not have factored without dividing, and so we needed to go through that process. So just a different way to look at this problem is rearranging it into a multiplication problem instead of division. So this is the process of long division. We also have another process of dividing polynomials called synthetic division. Synthetic you know the word synthetic means fake. So this could be dubbed fake division. Now it's still a method of useful division. It's just a different method. Now this method can only be used in circum cer certain circumstances. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at those circumstances and talk about why that may be the case. The first thing that I'm going to do, we haven't, you've never done synthetic division with real numbers, and it can't be really done with real numbers. So I'm going to give you a list of steps, and we're going to work through an example problem uh, following those lists of steps. So here are the four steps that we are going to follow for synthetic division. If you need to pause the video and write the steps down, feel free to do so. The first one is going to be to find the zero of the divisor. Then we're going to use that zero in the coefficients of the dividend to ar arrange the problem. It's going to look a little bit different. We are going to add down each column of our division problem and multiply the result by the zero into the next column. So let's take a look at those steps individually here. So the first thing that we want to do is find the zero of the divisor. My divisor here is x plus 1. So remember, zeros are solutions to the equation if the equation was set to 0. So what I would do is I'd subtract 1 from both sides. So x equals negative 1. My 0 is negative 1. So I'm going to take this 0, negative 1, of the divisor and the coefficients of the dividend. So what I'm going to do... in you may see this arranged differently based on what resource you're using, but I'm going to take a division symbol and arrange it upside down. On the outside, of, I'm going to use the zero of the divisor, which is negative one. On the inside, I'm going to list the coefficients. Now, we have to be careful and make sure that if there's any coefficients that are missing, we do include a zero. So here I have x cubed, x squared, x to the first power, and x to the zero power. That's fine. I have all my coefficients. Here I have z to the fifth, and then I'm missing z to the fourth and z to the third, so we're going to need some zero placeholders when we take a look at b. So in a, my coefficients are listed are 1, 4, 1, negative 6. Now, what I tend to do with this is I go ahead and put a box, a little box under negative 6. 
this is going to be my remainder when I get there, if there is one. So this is finding the zero of the divisor, and now I have arranged the problem. I'm going to add down each column. Well, there's nothing to add in the first column, so essentially 1 plus 0, I'm bringing the 1 down. 1 plus 0 is just 1, and so I'm going to put that underneath at the bottom of my column. Now, the result, I'm going to multiply by the 0, negative 1, and put that into the next column. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. That goes in the next column. Now I have something to add down my column. So 4 plus negative 1 would be 3. And I'm going to repeat this process. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. That goes in the next column. Negative 1 times negative 3, or sorry, add down the column. So 1 minus 3 would be negative 2. Then take this negative 1 times negative 2. And positive 2 goes in the next column add down the column, and I'd get negative 4. So my result is 1, 3, negative 2, negative 4. Well, that's just a list of numbers. To see what these numbers mean, I'm actually going to do the long division for this problem. So you don't necessarily need to include this in your notes if you don't want to. But if I do this problem with long division, x plus 1 is my divisor, x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6 is my dividend. The first term of the divisor and the first term of the dividend, x cubed divided by x would be x squared. Now I'm going to take this x squared and multiply it to x plus 1, which would be x cubed plus x squared. Then I'm going to subtract these values from the dividend, and that's going to give me 3x squared plus x minus 6. I'm going to repeat my process. So 3x squared divided by x would just be... 3x. I'm going to take that 3x and multiply it to my divisor. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. I'm going to subtract these from the remainder, remaining portion of the dividend. This is negative 2x minus 6. I'm going to repeat my process. So negative 2x divided by x would be negative 2. Negative 2 times the divisor, x plus 1, would be negative 2x. Minus 2. And then I am going to go ahead and subtract those values. So change in those negative signs to positive sign. And I'd be left with a negative 4. So my answer here, if I do the long division, is x squared plus 3x minus 2. Then my remainder is minus 4 over my divisor, x plus 1. Now, if I take a look at the numbers here, the coefficients here for my answer when I do the long division, you can see that those are all of the numbers listed here through synthetic division. So this negative 4 is my remainder, meaning negative 2 is x to the 0 power, or just negative 2. 3 is x to the first power, 3x. And 1 is the coefficient for x squared. So from this resulting synthetic division that we just did, I get the answer x squared plus 3x minus 2 minus 4, my remainder, over my divisor, x plus 1. So what you can see here is that synthetic division is a different process for doing the same thing as long division. Now, there are certain scenarios where you have to do long division, but notice here on the left, this work is probably a lot easier than all of the long division work we did over here on the right. So synthetic division takes the coefficients of the dividend, the zero of the divisor, and through this process of adding and multiplying, we come up with the coefficients for the quotient. So... Let's take a look at 2b, and let's complete 2b with just synthetic division. So again, the first thing I want to do here is find my 0 of my divisor. So my divisor is z minus 2, so if z minus 2 equals 0, add 2 to both sides, z equals 2. So my divisor is 2. So I'm going to set up my synthetic division problem.
sorry, that should be a 2 on the outside. I'm going to put in the coefficients of my dividend on the inside. Notice again that z to the 5th has a 1 in front of it technically. z to the 4th does isn't listed there, so its coefficient is 0. z to the 3rd is not listed, so its coefficient is 0. z squared is listed, its coefficient is negative 3. z to the 1st power is not listed, its coefficient is 0. And then finally, I have the last z to the 0th power or the constant negative 20. So I do have to make sure if I start with z to the 5th, I have z to the 4th, I have z to the 3rd, z squared, z to the 1st, and z to the 0 power, or just my constant, all accounted for when I list this out. The last term, underneath that last term, is going to be my remainder, so I put a box under that. You don't have to, but that's just kind of how I distinguish it. Now, the process of synthetic division. Add down the columns. There's nothing to add in the first column, so 1 plus 0 is just 1. Take that result times the 0 out in front. So 2 times 1, and put that in the next column. 2. Add down this column. 0 plus 2 is 2. Take this result, multiply it times the 0. 2 times 2 is 4, goes into the next column. Add down that column. 0 plus 4 is 4. Take the result 2, or sorry, take the result 4, multiply it times the divisor 0. 2 times 4 is 8. That goes in the next column. Add down the column. Negative 3 times 5, or sorry, negative 3 times 8, negative 3 plus 8 would be 5. Take that result times the 0. 2 times 5 is 10 goes in the next column. Add down that column and we get 10. And finally, take that result, 10 times the divisor, 0, 2. 2 times 10 is 20. Add down the column and we get 0. So this division problem is completed here. These are the coefficients. So this is my constant, or sorry, this is my remainder, my constant, z to the first power, z to the second power, z to the third power, z to the fourth power. So my resulting quotient would be z to the fourth plus 2z cubed plus 4z squared plus 5z plus 10. So if z minus 2 is a factor of what we just divided, so is z to the fourth plus 2z cubed plus 4z squared plus 5z plus 10. And this is how we do synthetic division. Okay, so this would be, though this synthetic division problem took a little bit of work, it's a lot faster than doing long division across all of those terms. And the last problem we're going to take a look at is problem number three. It says find the quotient for this expression where we're dividing by something that's nonlinear. Notice that both of the, all of the terms so far that we've divided, all of our divisors have been linear, x to the first power, z to the first power. In this first instance, this is, for the first time we see something other than the first power, we see x to the second power. So this is non, a nonlinear divisor. Anytime we have a nonlinear divisor, we have to use long division. So the reason being, if I were to try to find my zeros for this, I would add 2, which would give me a positive 2. And then I would square root, which would give me plus or minus root 2. So I have more than one zero. So which one do I choose? Well, you can't just choose one to do synthetic division. You can't do synthetic division because there's more than one zero. So anytime you have a nonlinear divisor, we are going to have to use long division. So let's go ahead and complete problem 3 here with long division. So my divisor, x minus 2, is going outside of my division symbol here. And then on the inside goes my dividend, 2x to the 4th plus x cubed minus 7x squared. Notice that it skips over x. I'm going to put a 0x there just in case I need that placeholder. So we may find that that placeholder is useful, may not find that it's useful, but it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. 
So I'm writing out the divisor, putting in a placeholder for 0x. Now I can complete the process of long division. So I'm going to compare the first term of the divisor to the first term of the div dividend. 2x to the fourth divided by x squared would give me x squared. So now I'm going to take this term in my quotient, x squared, and multiply it. Sorry, it should be 2x squared. I'm going to take this first term in my quotient and multiply it to my divisor. So 2x squared times 2x times x squared would be 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative 2 would be negative 4x squared. So I'm going to line up my like terms here because I want to subtract these values from the dividend. So if I subtract these values, I want those like terms aligned so that I can go ahead and subtract out the 2x to the fourth. I'm going to bring down my x cubed. I'm going to have a negative 3x squared, and then I'm going to bring down my 0x and my 3 for now. So this is the new version of the dividend, and we repeat the process. So x squared and x cubed. If I take x cubed divided by x squared, that gives me just x. So x times x squared would be x cubed. X times negative 2 would be negative 2x. And now we see a need for that 0 placeholder. So as I subtract down these values, what I'm left with is negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. I'm going to repeat my process. So negative 3x squared divided by x squared would be negative 3. I'm going to take that negative 3 times my divisor, so negative 3x squared. And negative 3 times negative 2 would be positive 6. I'm going to go ahead and subtract these values. So changing that negative 3x squared to a positive, subtracting that 6. And what I'm left with is 2x minus 3. So here, now I look again, x squared cannot divide 2x. So I have come to a place where I have a remainder. So then my answer is going to be 2x squared plus x minus 3 plus my remainder, 2x minus 3, over my divisor, x squared minus 2. And this is my final answer. Okay, so here we have taken a look at our methods of long division and synthetic division for dividing polynomials. We use synthetic division because it's faster. We're going to use synthetic division when we have a linear equation that is the divisor. If not, we are going to go ahead, if it's nonlinear, we're going to go ahead and use long division. This is a good place to stop for part one of the PR1, or sorry, PF1 notes. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.